Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zio here, sitting um, in a grocery parking lot right now. Uh, but also, I'm getting <clears throat> some network scanning going on. But I wanted to talk about um, Wiggle.net, the Wiggle um, Wi-Fi app right there, which you can get on Android. It's not available on um, iOS or, um, you know, Mac OS. You can't really do war driving or network monitoring with the iOS. With um, the Mac, yes, you can with, um, you know, like Kali Linux. And I have some microcontroller um, projects as well if you wanted to set up um, network scanning that way. Um, but, you know, it is best to probably do it through something like Kali Linux or something that can run like Aircrack NG, um, which allows you to use Airmon, AirG and monitor and export that data to um, throw it over to a tool like Wireshark. And then you can do more um, advanced things such as um, check for handshakes and crack um, those handshakes, which then can allow you to gain access into Wi-Fi networks or what have you. Um, but for this video, we're just gonna be talking about um, really what can you do with Wiggle? Because it has um, over 500, I think thousand downloads. I mean, it's probably over a million downloads um, through all the different ways people can access this app. Um, and, you know, with Wiggle.net, you can get your data how else, however you want to and um, upload it to the site as well. So we really, you know, the, the number of people who are actually gathering network data um, is uh, a lot. So it might seem like a pretty nonchalant whatever app. Oh, okay. You're scanning for... Um, networks and you're scanning for Bluetooth um, connections as well. You can scan for devices. Um, what really, you know, can that do? What What is that for? Well, Wiggle is interesting because it also maps the geographic location. Um, so it allows you to do a lot of things. For instance, um, it allows you to do a lot of re reconnaissance um, because it creates this map of networks. Um, your network name is actually a SSID. That's the actual um, address that's being broadcasted. So you might hear of people getting doxxed or what have you. And let's say a streamer on Twitch, a popular streamer, um, is re screen recording and they accidentally show their um, network information, like maybe their network setting uh, window is open. Or maybe they just have, you know, um, they're trying to connect to a network and they accidentally show the network they're connected to. Well, let's say it's um, Bob's streaming network is the name of his network name. Now you could go to Wiggle, type in the SSID and get information on that network. Maybe someone who is war driving on the Android phone, you know, million plus people using this, um, got that uh, SSID. Now someone could get the geographical location of approximately where that is. And with um, the map on Wiggle, um, you can get a heat map. So you can kind of pretty much hone in, especially in more popular cities like LA, and New York, what have you, <clears throat> you can really find out where someone's at. Or let's say you want to maybe find uh, more information on like a corporate business. You can, um, you know, search because, you know, in, a lot of businesses will have things like Microsoft uh, free Wi-Fi or, you know, um, Hayward in Suites free Wi-Fi or guest Wi-Fi. You know, so you can kind of hone in and just throw um, darts at the wall and try and find um, more information. 
you know, and this can help with asset discovery um, and find where vulnerable devices and access points might be. Um, another thing is Wiggle shows you a lot of information, especially the security of that network, um, whether it's WPA, WPA2. Um, it's a crazy stat, but about one to 2% of all networks are still unprotected uh, with no security. Um, but, you know, these may be just like guest Wi-Fi's or, um, you know, test networks. But a lot of people, especially at home networks, they might set up their router, like a Linksys router or a Cisco router, what have you. And they might just go with a default uh, uh, login information, you know, so it it also allows you to understand the networks in your area and someone who's maybe ha a hacker um, could hone in on these networks, especially in busy areas like L.A. and whatnot, um, especially in international areas, because Wiggle right now, I mean, I'm only on the American side, but let's say you're on vacation and you're in Thailand or Philippines, how many ca coffee shops, cafes, small little restaurants, people who are expats working remotely, connecting to all these free Wi-Fi's, free Airbnb Wi-Fi's, um, or even um, Airbnb Wi-Fi's that are just weekly configured. You know, <clears throat> there are still a lot of areas um, that Wiggle can hone in on and um, someone can take advantage of these vulnerabilities. And um, another thing is you can see the network names. So if you see a network name that has, there's a huge list of default network names with the default passwords. And um, one thing is though, someone might be connected to a guest Wi-Fi at their work. Um, they might've automatically joined because they don't have a strong enough signal. And someone who's listening in now and has access to the guest Wi-Fi, <clears throat> they can uh, get these handshakes as your phone might try to connect to your work's Wi-Fi automatically. And now they have that handshake between your work Wi-Fi and your phone. And now they can take that and try and crack it as well. Because let's say you work um, University of Chicago uh, Wi-Fi network, they might have 500 people trying to connect to that every day. So they might not have the strongest password or you're in a certain area. So um, that's also another way that just getting a little bit of information, you can really go further. Um, I've mentioned the geolocation and um, also especially because your phone's also broadcasting its own address. Um, so someone can track where your phone has been, um, because of all the, the data and the packets that they're sending out. Um, and an, another thing where someone can build off of this information, um, like you can take, uh, certain networks that are weak, um, certain networks, you know, now that you, you, you know, like you're in a city and you don't really realize all the different buildings all have routers, all have network hubs, all have dozens to hundreds of people all connecting at all different times. You know, like you don't even as a hacker need to really have a target. Your target is just where is the most vulnerable and it doesn't even need to be the most vulnerable network. You know, you could go to um, a bank, you know, and just listen in on the different um, communications and networks that are happening. And you can, you know, there's things called man in the middle attacks, um, you know, evil twin attacks where you clone, um, let's say, Bank of America corporate Wi-Fi network and you make it look like just like that exact network and you have people try to connect to your fake network and you get the handshakes and you can even have them enter in the password thinking that they're trying to get into the corporate network and then have 
it basically be a live keylogger that sends that password to a website to a website on a network only you can see and then when you turn that fake network off they realize oh that was weird and now i can connect back to the regular network but low key you just you know they you just had them hand you um the bank of america corporate password you know what i mean so the second you now get in you're connected to the network and this is where you know the hacking now turns into a crazy spider web because now you could have a little microcontroller you know you could you know people would send packages of like little microcontrollers or whatever that would now be connected instantly connected to the corporate um network and now trying to get access into all these other work computers or whatever you know all from sitting maybe in some parking lot and now you're like oh i didn't even know there was a bank of america corporate network here or something and just building off of a little bit of reconnaissance um yeah so there's quite uh there's quite a lot you know that you could do with um the simple app you know this is a 50 dollars phone um i also have like a, a 10 dollar android phone um, for other testing purposes. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, like as you can see, like it gives you like a little heat map and um, making sure you can't really see any private information. But yeah, like here's just a typical um, bit of information. And then you could see a heat map of where it's been spotted and you know you can just build from there and you can also automate all this with um python uh you know ai and uh your own coding to really speed up the anal analytical process aspect of this um and yeah that's just uh a little deeper uh, analysis of what you can do with Wiggle, you know, and um, even if you just want to be a scanner, you know, you don't have to be someone who takes action on this data. It helps a lot of cybersecurity and network professionals and enthusiasts. Um, this isn't really 100% just for people who are doing um, malicious things. Um, so I hope you like that. That's just my... Um, you know, perspective on Wiggle. I mean, there's people who use it for a lot of other things. You, should, you can also upload your um, network and geographical data, um, I think to Google Maps, I think because you can uh, export your data f into Kismet. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool, awesome, interesting things going on uh, with this. And I hope to bring some more uh, tutorials on what to do with um, Wiggle and maybe show some uh, red teaming uh, penetration testing uh, te techniques um, because I, I wanted to set up some uh, test networks, even with um, my extra, if you have an extra phone, you can set up a mobile hotspot and you could see um, your own device pop up and you can maybe try to get handshakes um, now that you have uh, a certain uh, Mac address to listen on and, you know, just uh, learn that way, you know, versus, you know, trying to uh, listen in and get data on <clears throat> uh, public uh, free Wi-Fi's and whatnot, um, because it's probably definitely not legal. Um, even if you don't get caught, you know, it's still a thing about uh, privacy. So hope you enjoyed and as always stay peaceful stay positive stay progressive stay productive stay proactive and i promise you you will always be blessed and probably and hopefully never get hacked um but this is out there wiggle you can find it on the android uh play store um millions of people are using it um every day your uh, home network is probably on there as well um and just be safe you know if you are doing video screen recording uh posting pictures of stuff just 
you know, try to leave as, as much uh, personal information, uh, especially your digital information, out as possible. Anyways, Divanzo going out. Peace.